Welcome to Wisdom from the Mountain, a podcast about intuition, spirituality, and following your path. I'm your host, Tara Alexandria. I'm a psychic medium, intuitive guide, and healer. I'm here to support you to live from your intuition and find true healing and authentic growth. Thank you for being here and for your willingness to live your best life for yourself and for the world around you. Hello and welcome to Wisdom from the Mountain. Today's episode is a full moon messages episode. So we'll be looking at the current energies and what I feel you can lean into right now for your highest support through this time. But first, I do have a few announcements. Today is Tuesday, April 7th, and tomorrow I'm offering a free group healing session to help support you right now, to help you move through this time with more grace, with more strength, and to help you really clear out anything that isn't serving you. That's my highest intention for this group healing, and I'm offering this right now because this is a time that I really think people need it. And I kept asking myself how I could help more and how I could give back. And if you follow me on Instagram, you probably know I'm doing live streams each day so that there might be a little bit in there that gives you some support, whether I'm answering people's questions or just talking about the energy right now. But this free group healing session is going to have a focused energy. It is just like a private healing session with me, except I'm holding the intention for many people. I do this sometimes in person when I'm working at a seminar and I hold a meditation that includes a healing. And I can really speak to these as being incredibly powerful. Right now, you might be feeling like you just are overwhelmed, you don't know what to do, or you're just feeling a lot of intensity. And it's my goal to just show up for you in the small way that I can to give you some support that is emotional and spiritual and helps you to sort of center yourself through this time that might be feeling pretty overwhelming. So if you're interested, go to my website and sign up under the scheduling section labeled group healings. You can also go to the link in my Instagram profile and it'll take you right to it. My next announcement is about Lindsay Mack's Tarot for the Wild Soul course. Lindsay has been on my podcast. She was episode number eight and Lindsay is someone that I actually refer to a lot in my work just because I love her. I think she is an amazing, incredible teacher for life itself and for really deepening your personal tarot practice, for taking your personal reflection and your understanding about the cards themselves, the archetypes, and just bigger life circumstances and spiritual growth and really taking these things to a new level. So with her course, It opens up on April 9th, but it will actually go live on May 1st. The way that Lindsay moves us through a course is so lovely because each week is created as this container for us to learn specific things related to our practice and related to ourselves. She really nurtures us through this course, and she offers so much presence that you are fully taken care of and nourished. I'm an affiliate for her course this year because I believe in it so much and I know that it can take you so much further in your personal practice. With that in mind, if you sign up through my affiliate link, you will actually get some extra goodies that I've included to do just that, to support you in your personal practice. One thing that I'm offering is a class on reading tarot for yourself which is something that I really have a particular view on for developing your own intuition and kind of coming at it from both a left brain and right brain perspective. On top of that, we will have a full group mentorship session to help you to deepen your personal tarot reading practice. And this will take place in late June or early July at the end of Lindsay's course. And finally, I'm offering my full life tarot reading with a 25% discount to those of you that sign up. So my affiliate code is just my name. It's Tara. And when her course opens on April 9th, simply be sure to use that code so that you will be guaranteed to get a spot in what I'm offering. 
You can ask me any questions about this course on Instagram, check it out at tarotforthewildsoul.com, and even reach out to Lindsay's team with any other questions. All right, so those are all of my announcements, and now I'd like to move into this month's full moon messages. The full moon is in Libra at this time, and I'm sure that there's so much beautiful astrological information out there and things that are being said from that viewpoint. I always wait for a message to sort of come into my mind. I wait for what I want to speak about, what I feel is coming forward, and what I feel that you need to hear at this time. Last week, I talked a lot about how to support yourself through this current time that we are all in when the world feels sort of upside down for some of us. A lot of you are reaching out to me and talking about how you just feel overwhelmed. You just feel like there's too much energy or too intense of energy. And again, this is why I'm offering that group healing session for tomorrow. But what I want to speak to today is how you can actually be with yourself through this time, how you can be in a hold, how you can be with this sort of acceptance and self-care and total balance in this time that feels so uncertain and so out of balance. I believe that right now is a time of deep grief coming forward and of change. For many people, that grief is extremely real. For many, it is about truly losing someone in life. It's about facing death. But for others of us, it's about grieving who we think we are, and changes that are happening to us that feel completely out of our control. And what I want to invite you to do today is to envision the period that you're in right now, this period of hold of maybe not being able to take any action or to do something right now that you feel you have to do as a period of potential opportunity, of possibility, of being full of something that is for you somehow, even if you can't see it right now. The first example I'm going to use is finances and jobs. The reason for that is because so many people are out of work. We are suddenly seeing incredible unemployment. We are suddenly seeing this implosion of our lives. And it feels like, what will we do? How will we go forward? And will it look the same? Will it look different? And we're trying to find the guarantee in there. And we're also trying to be in control. The first thing I want to say is you're not in control. You're never in control of your life. And this is something that is very hard to take in and to think about and to be with, but I invite you into it right now because we're in a time where it's right in our face. (laughs) Knowing that we aren't in control is right in front of us. And I spoke to this on a previous episode in more depth. And what I want to say here is how can you be happy with that uncertainty? How can you embrace it in a way that is positive And how can you see it as inviting you forward in a way that will only contribute to you rising up, to you getting some kind of fortunate circumstance or result from this? I feel like we can often look at change and only be afraid and only be in grief over what we're leaving behind. But if we can look at it from the perspective of, oh my gosh, this is a potential opportunity. This is a time that I have that has been given to me rather than been done to me. And so often out there, we talk about what I think was said by Tony Robbins that Life is not happening to you, it's happening for you. This can be something that is so difficult to embrace, to believe in, to understand. 
And this is a great time to sit with that phrase every day. How can what I'm experiencing right now be happening for me? What is the truth that it's showing me? What is the light that it's shedding into my life? How is what I'm moving through in this change giving me an opportunity for today, for this moment, for tomorrow? Because we really want to be in the present while focusing on the future and having this positive viewpoint toward the future, but actually being here, actually being where we are. When you can really follow that inner part of yourself that is here, is present, you are really connected with your soul. You're connected with your spirit. I always call that voice behind the voice in meditation that you get connected to your spirit or your soul. And I also believe it's something else because I don't think we're just souls. I think we are souls within a soul. (laughs) I think that there's this greater soul of the universe that we're a part of. It's sort of like the drop in the ocean is a drop, but it's also the ocean. The breath that you're taking is a breath, and yet it's also just the air that fills the entire world. And I feel that if you can connect into that part of yourself, what you're actually connecting into is the collective. And when you connect into the collective like that, you actually are filled with this knowing that you're okay, that life is okay, that you're always going to be okay. And I really believe that, that no matter what we're moving through, we are always spiritually safe. We are always okay because spirit can't be destroyed. It can't be hurt. And if we move from this place, from an emotional level, We give ourselves such a powerful anchor that nothing can shake us. Nothing can turn us away from that truth once we know it. Once our eyes are opened and have seen, we can't unsee. And so connecting in with this during this time is going to ignite in you a trust that is so powerful that the little things, which I acknowledge are not necessarily little ever, but especially right now, but those things that I'm going to label the little things here sort of diminish in their importance in our minds at this moment, at this time. It's that idea of having a stone in your shoe and being only able to focus on it, to feel it and to feel like you can't do anything or enjoy anything else until you take care of this stone in your show. But when you connect into this, you're able to elevate your gaze and your attention and notice the world around you more. That stone might still be there, but you are not so overtaken by its energy and by its presence. Instead, you're able to enjoy your walk through the world. You're able to enjoy and focus on what it is that you're supposed to be doing in this moment. And you can still put in the back of your mind that, okay, I'm going to take care of that stone later. But right now, it is not what needs my attention. I truly believe that the problems that are popping up for so many of us right now are not what deserve our attention. I believe that it's the present moment that deserves our attention. So let's just imagine that you are one of the people that has been let go from a job and you're worrying about your financial situation, you're worrying about your home, you're worrying about your children. Instead of being in that worry, how can you today, take a moment to step into trust. How can you take care of your feelings right now to calm your mind? How can you take care of the actual earthly duties that you have to be sure that your bills can be paid next month somehow, some way? How can you get support? How can you ask others for support? How can you get, um, deferments or a forbearance or something that helps you feel like, okay, I have a little breathing room. And how can you see this as an opportunity to let go of what you had 
prior to this week or two weeks ago? How can you let go of the position you had, the job you held, the way that you were moving through the world in a way that is positive? Is there a reason that maybe this wasn't serving you anymore? Or is there a way that you can at least, at minimum, embrace being home with your family, getting to enjoy your pets and your children, getting to maybe indulge in a meditation practice? Not just get to do it, but indulge in it. Maybe there's something that you've always wanted to have time for, like clearing out bookshelves and closets and basements, and now you have this time. Could it be that you were given this time and this moment for you? Could it be that this was a space that was made in your life and that there was a positive in it, that there was a way to move with it? that would help you to somehow move through your own personal healing, your own personal growth, your spiritual growth. Right now, it's so important to simply find a balance in the way that you're feeling because feelings are still running pretty high in the entire world right now. And the uncertainty is what is fueling that. When you feel uncertain, your feelings can fly everywhere. But another thing that I want to invite you into considering is that you're being invited to balance your feelings right now and going forward. Because if you stop and think about it, how often have you been happy with where you are right now? How often have you been okay with where you are right now? One thing that really struck me with so much of our world staying at home right now is that people are unhappy about it. They feel stuck. They feel like they're locked in somewhere. They feel that they are blocked from um, meeting up with people or engaging with the world. And yet, How often are you at your job or out in the world and you aren't happy about that either? At your job, do you say, I'm happy to be here, I'm having a great day? Or do you say, oh, I'm here, I wish I wasn't, or I wish I was at home, or I wish I was meditating, or I wish I was doing this or doing that? What comes up in your daily life, in your daily feelings, might be what's manifesting right now. And is that with a positive slant or with a negative one? Is it something that is coming from a place of personal empowerment and trying to make the best out of your current situation? Or is it coming from a place of saying, other people are affecting my situation and how can they fix it? When will it be taken care of for me? Those of us that are privileged enough right now to simply be at home, to be taking care of ourselves and our families so that we limit the extent of this virus, and that we also protect our frontline workers and um, our hospitals and the people that would need to respond to us if we were to fall ill, that is actually an incredible privilege because in itself, we are being given time and space. We're being given a moment of opportunity for personal healing. And we're also being given the opportunity to figure out how we can go forward better on our path or go forward differently in a way that is a bit more positive or a bit more what we want for our life because that's really what it's about. It's about figuring out what do you want, what does it look like, and how are you going to make that happen or how are you going to allow it to happen because so often we actually are fighting what could come forward in our life if we would just allow, if we would be open to receiving and to seeing how the wheel of change is actually moving us in the right direction for us, even if it's uncomfortable, 
even if it's difficult, and even if what we have to move through first feels like it sucks. So with this full moon message today, I'm inviting you to move through your feelings, your grief or your sadness or your anxiety from a space of feeling it in order to heal it, in order to give it space, in order to give it understanding, and giving yourself the permission to look at your current situation from a positive lens, not feeling bad that other people are going through difficulties, but using your situation in the most positive way, because that is what's going to contribute to your world and therefore the world in the best way. When I say when you heal yourself, you heal the world, I literally mean that. I truly believe that healing yourself in every way brings up your the vibration of your life, of your inner circle, and then that expands and expands and expands. There are some beautiful studies out there about the social connections we have with each other and how we affect one another. And there are actually some really difficult ways that we are affected by people we don't even know and that we affect people we don't even know through habits and moods and attitudes. And I don't think science has figured out why that is yet. There is this beautiful um, study about the degrees of separation that we're all at at this point and how our health is related to those interconnections. Health is one of the first aspects of healing that most people look at. It's usually physical health that even draws us into the healing realm. But the ways that we need to heal are far beyond physical. They're emotional, they're spiritual, they're intergenerational, they are national, and they are on a world scale. All of the ways that we need to heal need to be taken on first from a personal level, first from within ourself, from within our own heart, and then on the scale of families and communities and nations. And this is so important to do. So this may be an opportunity if you are one of the lucky ones, one of the privileged ones to be safe at this time, to be moving through the world in a way that is simply asking of you to take good care, to stay safe, to stay well. So how can you be in this with more acceptance and with more self-care? How can you be in this with more balance? How can you be with yourself through this time as it is totally present to what you're feeling without judging it, without being upset about it, without being upset at the feelings you're having? For so many, this is a hold. This is a pause. So how can you be on pause and feel this wheel of change rotating around you and know that right now, you're sort of in a space of action within non-action, within a place that tells you you probably can't do what you want necessarily in this situation. You certainly can't fix the things that are pressing on you the most. But what can you do? Because I promise you there is a lot. There is a lot that you can do. I hope that this helped you in some way, uplifted you. I'm sending you so much love and so much support through this time. I understand how hard it can be, but again, I'm inviting you to step into the positives, to step into the ways that this is an opportunity. I love you so much. Thank you so much for being here and for listening, and I will catch you next time on Wisdom from the Mountain. Mm-hmm.